Welcome back to question four of our series on projectile motion problems. The question reads, a baseball is hit at a 45 degree angle and a height of 0.9 meters. The ball travels a total distance of 120 meters. What is the initial velocity of the ball? And what is the height of the ball above a 3.0 meter fence, 100 meters from where the ball was hit? As you can see underneath, I've written down the projectile motion formulas and we'll be using these to help us answer the question. So let's illustrate what is happening. First, I will create an XY plane and the ball is hit. So I'll call this my Y axis, my X axis, and this is the height of the ball. It is hit 0 0.9 meters from the origin. And eventually it takes on this parabolic motion until it reaches the ground 120 meters away. So the distance from here to here is 120 meters. We need to find out the initial velocity. So the initial velocity, let's illustrate that with a vector. This vector can be written down into separate vectors, one as the y component and the other as the x component. From this point, what I will do is use these formulas to help me find the time. The time it takes to reach 120 meters. Using that, I can then find out the initial velocity using this formula. Now, how do I do that? I'll be using this formula and this formula and solving them simultaneously. In case you're confused, Let's use this formula and substitute every value that we know from the question into it and see where that takes us. So I know that 120 meters away can be replaced with this x value. I have 120 is equal to the initial velocity, which I don't know, times cosine at an angle of 45 times t. At the same time, I'll fill in this formula with information that I know from the question. I'll replace the value for y with negative 0.9. Now you're probably thinking, why is it negative 0.9 when the value is 0.9 or positive in the illustration? Well, if you draw a horizontal line extending from this point all the way to here, you will not reach 120. So to take into account the height, we will have to write down negative 0.9 and the rest of the equation equals two. Again, V initial is unknown, times sine of 45T minus 0 0.5 times 9.8, which is the acceleration due to gravity. And because gravity has an effect on the value of Y as it brings the ball down to the earth, that's the reason why we have negative 0 0.5. So there's no need to write down negative 9.8 in here. And that's multiplied to t squared. The strategy moving forward is to isolate for v sub zero in equation number one and substitute that expression into here. Because what that will do is give us a new formula that's exclusively in terms of t. We can find the value for t and substitute that back into one of the equations to find the value for the initial velocity. In case that's confusing to you, here's what I mean. So I'll start with equation number one and I'll solve for that factor by dividing both sides by cosine 45 times t. If you do that correctly, you should look like this. You should have 120 over cosine 45 times t is equal to the initial velocity. And now I will take this and place it into there. So this is how you solve an equation simultaneously, much the same way you do with linear systems. So I have negative 0 0.9 is equal to 120 over cosine 45t. Then we have sine 45 times t. This t and this t will cancel out. Notice that this t is at the top and that's at the bottom. Minus these two multiplied make negative 4.9t squared. So all I have to do is solve for t squared and then for t. We have 120 times sine 45 over cosine 45 
minus 4.9 t squared. You do not need the quadratic formula for this part. You can solve it manually. You can actually take this whole expression, whatever it is equal to, and bring it to the other side. Let me show you on the calculator. I have negative 0 0.9 minus the whole expression. So 120 times sine 45 divided by cosine 45. And that's equal to negative 120.9. Let's write that down. Negative 120.9 is equal to negative 4.9 t squared. We divide both sides by negative 4.9. You see, this cancels out, then we'll be left with t squared on the right side. First, the left side. This number divided by negative 4.9 makes a positive number. That, square rooting this, we get 4.967. 4.967, and remember there are two values for t, one being positive and negative, and we'll only take the positive version. So we'll take this, that's the amount of time that it takes to reach 120 meters. We will take that value and substitute it right into there and then solve for v sub 0 or v initial. I'll show you my work over here. 120 is equal to v initial times cosine 45 times the value we found 4.967 4.967. We divide both sides by cosine 45 times 4.967 that again on the left side. All right, so that, 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 and that cancel out and we have V initial on the right side. 120 over bracket cosine 45 times 4.967. We get 34.16. 34.16 and if you want the correct number of significant figures rounded to two it should be 34.17 meters per second. That's the initial speed. And that answers the first part right there. For the second part, what is the height of the ball above a three meter fence, 100 meters from where the ball was hit? So let's say that is 100 meters from here, from where it was hit. And we know that it's going to cross this three meter fence, okay? We just want to know the height of the ball. What I can do is again use this formula shown here and find out the time that it takes to reach 100 meters. So I'll replace x with 100 is equal to the initial velocity. This is why it's important to find it. Cosine 45 times t. Let's solve for t by dividing both sides. So 100 divided by 34.17 times cosine 45, close, close, and that gives us a time of 4.14, 4.14 seconds to reach the 100 meter mark. That's 100 meters, okay, and that's seconds, 4.14. Now, what I can do is use this formula to find out the height. So I'll take the time value and throw it into here and here. Let's use our calculator for this. I don't need to write it down anymore. So I have 34.17 times sine at an angle of 45 times the time we found of 4.14. That's this part. Now we have minus 0 0.5 times 9.8 and in brackets 4. 0.14 raised to the power of 2. We get a value of 15.95. Now remember, the ball was hit at 0 0.9 meters above the ground. So we have to take this value and add 0 0.9 to it. Therefore, the ball is 16.85 meters from the ground. So from here all the way to the ball, it is 16. 0.85. And from where it was hit to where it is, it is the value before that, which is 15.95. And there you have it. Question number four answered for you. If you need more help, make sure to watch question five in this series.